Welcome back to The Late Show. <laughs> Folks, my first guest tonight is a renowned author who has been awarded many of literature's highest honors, including the Booker Prize and a knighthood. He was named one of Time Magazine's 100 most influential people in the world last year. Please welcome to The Late Show, Salman Rushdie. <laughs> Um, I'm glad to see you here. Glad Thank to see you. you anywhere, actually, because yeah. for the people who there who, who may not know, though I, I, I doubt there are many, uh, about a year and a half ago, you were attacked on stage at an event at the Chautauqua Institute uh, up in New York here uh, and almost lost your life. That's right. Uh, how are you feeling about, how are you feeling these days? I'm, I'm surprisingly well. Yeah. You know, to, to my surprise. It... <laughs> Thank you. I think. I think that, that the technical term is that I'm a medical miracle. <laughs> that's, that's how close you came to death? That's, yeah. I mean, they, they, they initially thought probably they weren't going to be able to save me, but then fortunately they were wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, a year and a half is really not that long no. for something as traumatic as, as that. Um, I, know, I know you've, you've written uh, a, a book about the event uh, called Knife, yeah. Meditations After an Attempted Murder. But, but before we get into the book, I'm just curious, would you mind describing the attack from your own point of view? Yeah, I mean, I was on stage with a colleague to talk about, ironically enough, to talk about protecting writers who were in danger in, in various countries in the world, you know? Yes. And then the person who wasn't protected turned out was this writer. Yes. Um, and man ran out of the audience and basically stuck a knife in me 14 times. 14 times? 14 times. And he actually looked a little bit like a very famous tennis player. It was like being stabbed by Novak Djokovic. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend that either. No, I wouldn't. Uh... <laughs> but you, you, you say you, you, you nearly died. Yeah. What, I mean, did you have what people would call a near-death experience? I and did, How yeah. would you describe that? No, I mean, I was, you know, I was on the floor with a substantial quantity of red liquid around me, which I identified as coming from me. Mm -hmm. And... So you had awareness, you weren't... Yeah, I was conscious, I was okay. conscious. And, right. I, I th and I just thought in a kind of ordinary way, I thought, oh, I, I, I think I'm dying. Mm -hmm. and, and then, I'll tell you what happened is nothing happened. There was no heavenly choir, there was no tunnel of light, there was no pearly gates, there were no fires of hell. Nothing. It was just me lying on a stage, bleeding. And then, fortunately, I was wrong about that. So I managed, they managed to get me into a helicopter and to the nearby trauma hospital in time. But, but there was something uncanny about it, I understand. I've learned today that you had a premonition of this Oh, attack. yeah, that was, that was weird. That was two days before I went up to, to do this lecture. I mean, the, the space that it's in is called an amphitheater. So I had a dream about being in, in a kind of movie amphitheater, like a Roman amphitheater. Gladiator. Gladiators. And there was a gladiator in it with a spear attacking me. And I was on the floor rolling about while he's thrusting down. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I said to my wife, Eliza, that I'd had this dream. And I said, you know, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And then I woke up a bit more and I thought, you know, it's a dream. Mm. It's a dream. Who, who runs their lives according to whether they had a bad dream today? So I thought, no, okay, I'll go. And maybe I should have paid attention. Mm. Yeah. Will you pay attention to your dreams in the future? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Especially the ones where I win a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, the, the book, as I said, the book is called, uh, called Knife, Meditations After an Attempted Murder. How, I, I, I imagine, do you, did this help you deal with the well, trauma of it? Like, what was the motivation? Yeah, here? I mean, the motivation was that I couldn't write anything else. You know, this is such a huge thing happens in your life. Mm -hmm. And what, you sit down and you write a fairy tale about something, you know, it would just seem stupid. How quickly did you, how soon well, after? I started, you? I mean, there was about six months when I couldn't write anything. Mm. And, and I guess around February last year, 
I started working on it and it got finished in about the end of October, kind of like that. Well, what's the story that you want us, that you want to tell us about this? Well, that you see was interesting to me. I thought that, okay, I got attacked, that's, that's something. And I can describe that as I just did in 30 seconds or less. So what's the book? And, and what I felt the book ended up being was about three people. It ended up being about me and him. I don't use his name in the book. Mm. And, and my wife, Eliza, who was the person who saved my life also. And there was like this triangle. And one of, them, one of the people at the point of the triangle represented love and one represented death. And I was the third point of the triangle. So it was like a struggle between hatred and love between death and life, you know, and that's the story I was trying to tell. And, and, and fortunately, love wins. Wow. We have to take a break. We'll be right back with more Salman Rushdie, everybody. Stick around.